skip three. Now we learned about how to load the SAR data, but the raw SAR data or the even the pre-processed SAR data that is available in Earth Engine is not usable readily. You need to do at least one more pre-processing step to be able to use it. And that step is spectral filtering. If you see how a SAR data looks, you'll see that even a homogeneous image, so everything is flat or it's the same field, you'll still see the neighboring pixels will have slightly different values. And this is just the artifact of the signal processing and this is called speckles. So if you see, uh, even in kind of homogeneous regions, you'll see this salt and pepper noise in your image. And that's speckle. So if you just simply say, show me the difference between these two images, almost all pixels will be different because even if nothing has changed, there'll be some speckle noise. So one of the one important pre-processing step you need to do is you need to smooth your image and that's called speckle filtering. So far, we have this before and after image. Let's see how we can apply speckle filtering. There are many different filters available to smooth this image. And uh, the most widely used filter is something called a refined leaf filter. And here, filter refers to the kernel, right? So in traditional remote sensing, filters refer to the kernel operation, where you pass a kernel and you smooth it. There is a scientifically proven way to apply smoothing on a SAR image, and refined is the kind of most widely used. So, how do we apply refined leaf filter in, in Earth Engine? Well, somebody's done the hard work for you. They have written the code, and everybody in Earth Engine uses this code. This is by uh, Guido Lemoyne. He has published the code first, saying that I will write the code that is implemented in Sentinel Toolbox. And this is the Earth Engine implementation. You give it an image, it does a bunch of things. It computes the mean, variance, uh, passes some kernels, and at the end, you get your smooth image. Don't worry about understanding the code. The most important thing is, give it an image, you get the filtered image back. Okay. But there is one more problem. Look at the warning here. Images must be in natural units, not in DV. So to use this function, the function expects your image to be in natural unit, not in DB and our images are in DB. So we need to convert it to natural, run this function, and then convert it back to DB. So that's one additional step that we need to do. Again, we have functions that are available that will help you do this. So we have a function that says, give a image which is in decibel. This is the formula to convert to natural. Once you have a natural image, this is the function to convert to DB. So let's see how to use this. So we have those functions. Let's run this. So we'll say before filtered, we need to call this function refinedly on this before image. So we call this uh, function with our argument before this image will be sent to this function. This function will return a, a filtered image. But this image, the before image, has to be in natural unit. So we'll just call to natural. So first we call to natural. It's this function. It'll convert this to natural units, and then you get your image back. Whatever you get back is also in natural unit, which you can't use in your analysis. You need to convert it back to DB. So we'll convert the result to DB, which is our DB function, and then we have the result. So it just First, you convert to natural, send it to this function. The function does the smoothing. You get the image back, convert it back to DB. So this is just a kind of two round trips to convert uh, it back from DB to natural unit. And then finally, you just say, whatever I got back is an image. Because in the whole process, it has gone conversion from an image to an array back to an image. So you need to specify like what I'm getting at the back. Is it an array or is it an image? So this is kind of the... Kind of, a longer way to say I'm just calling a function and doing some conversions between that. So we'll just do it for before and after. And we can just display them. Let's just add them to the map. And here we are using this last parameter, which is false. That means when I run this by default, I will not see that. So I'll name this as after. So we are using this. So when we run this, the layers are there, but they don't display by default. It's just easier to turn on the layers that we want. So if you want to compare what is the effect of this filtering, we can just compare that. So this was the before image. 
and you'll see the after image. So you can see all the high frequency noise has been removed and you have a smoother version of the image. And this is a crucial pre-processing step. If you don't do this, you'll get wrong results. So anything to do with Sentinel one, please apply refine the filter. This function can also be mapped into a collection. So say I'm working with a very large area, filter your Sentinel one, map this function, and you have all images that are filtered. There's a question: Can we monitor river meandering with this? Yes. So river meandering can be uh, tracked by first detecting water in a scene and then comparing that water over time. Detecting water can be done with either optical imagery or SAR imagery. It's the same concept. With SAR imagery, it's simpler. You just do a thresholding or you know, you know, do any kind of thresholding technique and say anything less than 20 minus 20 is water. And you get water. Once you have water, how do you track meandering? Well, you need to find the center line of the river. So this is called medial axis. You need to find that this is the river. If I want to compare how the river changed, I need to first extract the center line. So the algorithms will go and extract the center line of the image. So you get a line representing the river. In the next image, you say, my center line is like this. And now you have two vector lines. You can say my river moved by this much amount. And this is widely used for studying river morphology changes, and you can do it over a long period of time. Let's uh, do the exercise. 